What is going on guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson number 16 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the date object. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications by clicking the bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 16. So in this lesson then, let's learn all about JavaScript's built-in date object. So let's say you wanted to create a site with a calendar or perhaps a site with a train schedule with the latest dates and times. Well, in order for those to work, you would need some way to identify the current date and time of the user that is on the site. And the date object is a built-in JavaScript object that provides several methods for managing, manipulating and formatting dates and times. To work with the date object, we need to first create an instance of the date object by using the new operator. Now, don't be confused by the term instance and what it means exactly. We'll be dealing with that when we look at objects. For now, just understand that in order to start using the date object and access different parts of dates, we need to create or instantiate a new date object. So there are four different ways that we can do this. There's a single method for pulling out the current date and time. And then the other three methods are ways that we can work with specific dates and times. So let me just show you how it all works. So first then, let's look at how to pull out the current date and time. So here I'm gonna say let, let's just call this current date. And this is going to be assigned to new and then date with a capital D. And then we add our parentheses at the end. And now if we just console.log our variable, so current date, let's go ahead and save this. In the console, we get the current date and time as well as the time zone that I'm in as well. And what we can do now is we can access different methods to manage and format dates. So here we can just say after current date, our variable, we can say dot. So here we've got get hours, milliseconds, minutes, months, seconds. Let's just go for get full year, remembering to add our parentheses at the end. And now if we save this, the console returns the current year. So in order to start working with the current date and time, we simply say new date with nothing in the parentheses. Let's now look at the other ways in which we can use the date object. So first let's just go ahead and get rid of this. And for now, I'm just gonna comment out this uh, console log. The second way that we can create a date is by using milliseconds. So let's say let milliseconds be assigned the value of, once again, we say new date. And in order to understand how this works, we need to first understand that the date and time is broken up and displayed in a format that we as humans can understand. But in reality, JavaScript understands the date based upon a timestamp. Now this timestamp is specified as the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since January the 1st, 1970. And that's basically based upon something we called Unix time or epoch time. So let's see how this works. So first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this millisecond timestamp. Okay, now let's go ahead and console log milliseconds and let's see what we get. So again, before we do this, this number here represents the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since January the 1st, 1970. Let's go ahead and save. And what we get is Tuesday, May the 1st, 2001 with a time. Let's just go ahead and change one of these numbers at random. Uh, let's just change this to eight. Save, and now we get Thursday, May the 3rd, 2001. Let's just change this to one. Okay, so that now gives us Friday, February the 9th, 2001. So once again, guys, this number represents the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since that date, January 1st, 1970. So if we were to say zero milliseconds, of course we get January the 1st, 1970. And the reason we get that is because this is zero milliseconds since that date. Okay, let's go back to our original one. And once again, guys, we still have all those methods. Okay, so we can say get full year. Let's do get full year again, save this and we get 2001. So that's the second way that we can create a date by using milliseconds. Let's go ahead and just comment this out as well for now. The third way that we can create a date is by using a date string. So here I'm gonna say let date string be assigned the value of new date just as before. And this time in the parentheses, we're gonna supply a specific date as a string. So I'm gonna say August 29th, 2019, and for the time, we'll just say 8.34. Okay, once again, let's go ahead and log this to the console, see what we get. Okay, so the console gives us this date that we've put in, okay? Thursday, August 29th, 2019, 8.34. And if you notice here, JavaScript has actually pulled out the day for us. So that's the third way of creating a date using a date string. And finally, the fourth way to create a date is to use date and time components. So our date and time is split up into different components. For example, we've got the month, the date, the year, even the time is split up. We've got hours, minutes, and seconds. So for the fourth way, let's say let, let's call this component date, be assigned the value of new date, and here let's specify some components. Okay, so what we've got here then is different date and time components. We've got the year, the month, 
the date, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So once again, let's go ahead and log this to the console and let's see what we get. So console.log component date. And in the console, we get Saturday, December the 25th, 1999, two o'clock. So let's see how this relates to what we've put in here. So the year, of course, is 1999, which we get here. The month of 11 is represented as December. And the reason for that is because months are zero indexed. So January is zero, February is one, etc. So December would be 11 as opposed to 12. This is the date, hour, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Now, if we wanted to, we could just state the year and month and then JavaScript will use default values for the rest. So let's just change this to 1998. Let's change this to three. And then let's get rid of the rest of these here. Let's save and let's see what we get. Okay, so we still get a full date and time, even though we've only specified the year and the month. Let's go ahead and just comment this out for now. So that's four ways that we can create a new JavaScript date object. And of course, the method that you use depends upon what you're building and what you need the JavaScript date object for. Now, when it comes to the methods of the date object, there are two main types of methods that we can use, get methods and set methods. The get methods enable us to retrieve or get date and time information, such as the month, the hour, or the year. We've seen an example of getting the year in a few of these, whereas the set methods are used to set them. Let's start with the get methods. Now, I won't go through all of them as there is quite a lot, but we'll look at what I believe are the most important and useful to learn. So the first one we're gonna look at is get full year. Now, again, we have looked at this very briefly, but let's just look at it for all of them here. So we're going to say console.log and then inside this we've got each of our variables and then they're all accessing the get full year method. Let's go ahead and save and see what the console gives us. Okay, so as expected, the console returns the year for each of these date methods. Let's go ahead and remove the three custom date objects here because for our other examples, we're just going to be working with the current date. The next get method we're going to look at is get month. So we can pull out the year, we can also pull out the month. So here we're going to say get month. Let's save this and let's see what we get. So the console returns one. And if you recall, we said that months are zero indexed. So since we're currently in February, we get one. Next, let's take a look at get date. Okay, so we're going to look at the actual date of the month. Okay, so we get 19 because it's the 19th of February today. We can also say get day. So we'll get day. And this returns a number to us as well, the number five. Once again, with days, just like months, they're actually zero indexed. So zero for Sunday, one for Monday, and so on. And as it's currently Friday, we get the number five. So that's the get day method. We can also pull out the hours. So we can say get hours, and it returns 15. Now get hours returns a number between zero and 23, which represents the hour for the given day. And that's obviously in the 24 hour clock. And so 15 represents, of course, 3 p.m. Next, let's take a look at get minutes. So get minutes. Okay, so it returns 59. So this returns the minutes of the time. So the time currently is 359. And of course, we can also return seconds. So get seconds. And that gives us 33. And of course, we can pull out milliseconds as well. So get milliseconds. And get milliseconds returns a number between 0 and 999, which represents the milliseconds for that given time. Now we can also say get time. And what this will do is it will return the current time as we're working with the current date up here, and it will be represented in milliseconds. So if we wanted to, we could actually use this. In fact, let's just go ahead and copy this as milliseconds. And if we were to just console log this, we get the current date and time, because this is the amount of milliseconds that have elapsed since January the 1st, 1970. Now, the last thing to know about the get methods is that for each of the methods we've seen, what we're doing is we're retrieving the date and time components based upon the user's time zone. But we can also retrieve this information based upon the UTC time zone, which is the primary time standard by which the world regulates clocks and time. So each of the get methods also has a UTC version. And we can see that if we let's just get rid of this and let's just say dot if we scroll down. OK, you see get UTC full year hours, milliseconds, etc. And so we can, if we wanted to, use these versions to retrieve the information based upon the UTC time zone. Okay, so that's all of the get methods. Now to learn set methods is actually really easy because basically each get method has a set version. So for example, instead of get full year, we can say set full year. Instead of get date, we can say set date and so on. Let's just take a look at set full year to see how the set methods work. So then first of all, let's get rid of this and let's say current date dot and let's go for set full year this time. And then in the parentheses, we're going to specify what the year should be. So let's change this to 1999. Okay. And now if we console.log current date dot get full year, the console returns 1999. 
So the year has now been changed by set full year, which is specified up here. And as mentioned, the other set methods work in pretty much the same way. Now, the next thing I want to look at is how can we actually retrieve the days of the week or the months of the year as text as opposed to numbers. So if you recall, we said that months and days are both zero indexed. So that whenever we try to retrieve that information, what we get back is a number representing either the month or the day. But we can actually get those by the actual names. Let's see how to do this. Let's go ahead and just get rid of this for now. And let's console.log current date dot and we're looking for get month. Okay, so obviously let's just go ahead and log this. At the moment, this gives us one. Now to get the actual month name, we can use the local string method. So let's get rid of this. And instead, let's say dot to local string. And in the actual parentheses, we can provide country abbreviations to get the month in different languages, or we can just use default, which I believe defaults to English. So in here, I'm just going to say as a string, the word default, then we say comma space. And the second thing that we need to provide is an object with the month set to either long or short. So to create an object, we do curly braces inside this. I'm going to say month colon space. And the value for this is going to be, let's go for long. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and let's see what we get now. Perfect. So the console now returns the actual name of the month, February. If we said short, then it returns a shortened version of it. And since this is an object, we can actually specify multiple key value pairs. So here I'm going to say month short comma, and then let's say weekday long. Now, if we save this, we get Feb and Friday. Let's change it to long. That looks a bit odd, doesn't it? Okay, so we get February and Friday. So in the same way, then we can actually pull out the name of the day as well. Obviously, you don't need to put this in as well. You can just get rid of this and we can just say default weekday long. Of course, we can also specify weekday short as well. So guys, that's all about how to use the JavaScript date object. To summarize then, the date object is a built-in JavaScript object that provides several methods for managing, manipulating, and formatting dates and times. To work with the date object, we need to first create an instance of the date object by using the new operator. There are four ways that we can create a new date object, depending on whether you want the current date and time or a custom one. We also looked at the fact that the date object gives us access to get methods and set methods. Get methods enable us to retrieve different components of date and time. For example, the year, the hour, or the second, whereas set methods allow us to set them. Month and day are both zero indexed, so January is zero, February is one, and for the days, Sunday is zero, and Monday is one. And finally, we can use the two local string method to get the actual names of the months and days. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. For task one then, I want you to instantiate or create a new date object, assigning it to the variable date. And then the type of date that we're looking for is the current date. For task two, use the console to log out today's date. For task three, I want you to create two new variables called hour and min, and then assign the relevant values to these. So get the hour and assign it to hour. And then console log the time, including colons in the console. For example, 10, 24, like this. And finally, for task number four, console log the name of the current day. You can use the long or shorthand. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, try these out. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one, we wanna go ahead and create a new variable called date. So let date, and we're gonna assign this to new date, like so, with nothing in the parentheses. Remember, we're working with the current date here. For task two, console log today's date. So down here, we're gonna say console.log, and we're gonna use that date variable. And then what we're looking for is get date. Let's save this, and we get 19 because it's the 19th today. For task three, let's go ahead and create two variables. So we're going to say let hour and we're going to assign this to date dot get hours. And the second variable that we need is going to be called min. And we want to set this to get minutes. Finally, we need to go ahead and console log this, including colons in the actual number. So down here, let's say console dot log. And as a template literal, we're going to say hour colon and then the second variable called min. So we go ahead and save this we get 429. And finally, for task number four, we want to console log the name of the current day. We can use either long or shorthand. So first, let's go ahead and say let day be signed the value of date dot to local string. Inside this, we're going to say default. And for the second value, an object, which is weekday, and that's going to have the value of, let's go for long. Okay, finally, let's go ahead and console log 
day. Perfect, we get Friday. So, well done on completing those tasks. As always, if you got something wrong, don't worry, simply go back and rewatch the video to find out how it's done. Okay, so that's it for this lesson guys. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about the built-in math object, which is going to be really, really cool. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like and subscribe down below and I'll see you on the next one.